Welcome back, aspiring entrepreneurs. Today, we are going to talk about the six top lessons about money that I learned from this fantastic book from Morgan Household called The Philosophy of Money. I've been following this tip for close to two years now, and that's how it has helped me to save $10,000 easily as a student. Of course, to save $10,000 per month, you need more tricks and tips which I will include in the description below. So now, let's get into it. Takeaway 1. Everyone has different attitudes towards money. Attitudes towards money vary based on individual circumstances and experiences. So, we shouldn't judge people based on their financial choices. Financial decisions may seem irrational to an outsider but they often make sense within the context of an individual's life experience. The psychology of money highlights that people's financial choices are deeply influenced by their unique upbringing, values, economic environment, and the lessons they have learned through personal experience. What may appear as reckless or overly cautious to one might be a rational decision for another, shaped by their distinct view of risk, reward, and the value of money. So for example, consider two different individuals, one who grew up in poverty and another in wealth. The former might see saving every penny and avoiding debt as paramount due to the instability they have experienced, while the latter might be more comfortable taking financial risk, viewing money as a renewable resource. Both approaches are rational within their life context. So, a survey by the Federal Reserve found that individuals who experience poverty are more likely to avoid financial risk compared to those who grew up in wealthier households. So reflect on how your financial decisions are shaped by your past experiences and consider how this perspective can help you understand and respect the financial choices of others. Take away to the role of luck and risk in financial success. The book emphasizes the significant, yet often underestimated role of luck in achieving financial success. While skill and hard work are crucial, they do not guarantee success without the favorable means of luck. Similarly, the presence of risk reminds us that not all failures are due to poor decision-making. The interplay of luck and risk shapes financial outcomes more than we might acknowledge. And this recognition can lead to a more balanced and forgiving perspective on both success and failure. So for example, imagine a group of skilled investors, all equally knowledgeable and hardworking. While some may achieve extraordinary success, others might not. Despite similar efforts and strategies, this disparity often stems from luck unpredictable market movements, timing, or external factors that favor some or disadvantaging others. An economist's research indicates that even among siblings, income are more closely correlated than physical attributes like height or weight, suggesting that factors beyond individual control significantly influence financial success. So, by recognizing the role of luck and risk encourages humility in success and compassion in failure. It nudges us to view financial achievements and setbacks not solely as results of personal efforts but as outcomes influenced by a complex mix of factors, some within and others beyond our control. So reflect on how luck and risk have played a role in your financial journey. Acknowledge their presence in the success and failures of others. Takeaway 3. Learn to say enough. This is enough. So, this book stresses the importance of recognizing when you have enough. In a world where success and wealth are often seen as limitless goals, understanding and appreciating what you have is a powerful concept. The narrative highlights the risk of relentless pursuit of more as it can lead to dangerous decisions and a life of perpetual dissatisfaction. Recognizing enough helps in maintaining a balance between ambition and contentment. For example, the story of Joseph Heller, the selling, 
when asked why he does not aspire to be a millionaire like a hedge fund manager at a party, he replied that he has something the millionaire could never have enough. This highlights the peace and satisfaction that comes from appreciating what one has instead of constantly striving for more, often at the expense of happiness and ethical value. So, understanding the concept of enough is not just about limiting ambition or potential. It's about recognizing and cherishing the value of what you have already and making decisions that align with your deepest values rather than being driven by societal benchmarks of success. It's about mitigating the risk that comes with unchecked ambition, such as unethical decision or sacrificing one's well-being. Take away for appreciate the magic of compounding. Compound interest can have a remarkable impact on your wealth over time. So it's crucial to start investing early and be patient. Compounding often underestimated due to its counterintuitive nature. It's a fundamental principle that drives fundamental financial success. The essence of compounding lies not in the short-term gains, but in the long-term accumulation and growth of assets. It's the force behind the success stories of financial giants like Warren Buffett, whose wealth is more a testament to time and patience than to extraordinary annual returns. Consider Bill Gates in 2004 criticizing Gmail's gigabyte of storage as unnecessary, a view stemming from the old paradigm of storage as a scare commodity. This reflects a common underestimation of exponential growth. Similarly, Warren Buffett's wealth isn't due to extraordinary annual returns, but rather a consistent long-term investment, showcasing silent yet powerful force of compounding. While Jim Simons of Renaissance Technologies boosted an annual compound rate of 66% since 1988, Warren Buffett's 22% seems modest. Yet, Buffett's longer time frame in the market significantly overshadows Simons' wealth, illustrating the profound impact of sustained compounding over time. Compounding demands not just time, but also resilience surviving the market's ups and downs without succumbing to panic or drastic strategies is key. As Charlie Munger puts it, the first rule of compounding is to avoid interrupting it unnecessarily. This means maintaining a stable, long-term investment strategy and resisting the temptation to chase high returns that can't be sustained. So I strongly recommend you to start to reflect on your long-term financial growth are you giving your investments the time and stability they need to grow through the power of compounding? Remember, true wealth accumulation is a marathon, not a sprint. So comment down below on what you are investing right now. Takeaway 5. Getting wealthy versus staying wealthy. The journey to wealth involves two distinct, equally important stages. Getting wealthy and staying wealthy. While many resources teach the art of wealth acquisition, the subtle, often more challenging aspect is wealth preservation. This phase requires not just financial acumen, but also a shift in mindset. From the aggressive tactics suitable for wealth creation to a more conservative, protective approach that ensures the longevity of wealth. For example, the stark differences in the approach of Warren Buffett and his one-time partner Rick, as well as the tragic story of Jay-Z, illustrate this concept vividly. While Buffett and Charlie Munger were not in a hurry to amass wealth, focusing instead on consistent long-term growth, Rick leverage led to his downfall during the market downturn. Similarly, Livermore, despite being an exceptional trader, failed to safeguard his wealth, ultimately leading to his dismiss. The Forbes 400 list of the richest Americans experiences about a 20% turnover per decade due to reasons other than death or transferring money to another family member, underscoring the volatility of wealth and the challenges in preserving it. So, 
Staying wealthy is not merely about maintaining a static balance, but actively managing and protecting your assets against potential downturns. It involves understanding the difference between being rich, having a high current income and spending it, and being wealthy, accumulating and retaining financial assets. The real metrics of wealth is not how much you earn, but how much you can keep. And this is often dictated by a combination of frugality and a healthy dose of paranoia. So I want you to reflect on your own financial journey. Are you focused solely on getting wealthy or are you also taking the necessary step to stay wealthy? Share your strategies or questions in the comment section below about balancing wealth acquisition with wealth preservation. Takeaway 6. Use money to buy freedom. The ultimate measure of wealth isn't just the size of your bank account, but the freedom and control it offers over your life. Financial freedom isn't about luxurious spending. It's about the liberty to make choices that align with your values and desires. It's the ability to wake up and decide what you want to do, whom you want to do it with, and for how long. This freedom is the highest dividend money pays, offering you the power to navigate life on your own terms. For example, the narrative of the investment banker in the book epitomizes this notion. Despite the allure of high earnings, the realization that money at the cost of personal freedom and time wasn't truly reaching. It is a powerful illustration of this concept. Similarly, the ability to handle emergencies without financial stress or choice to retire on your own terms further underscores the values of financial freedom. According to a research done by a psychologist, it shows that a strong sense of controlling one's life is a more dependable predictor of well-being than any objective conditions of life such as salary, house size or job. True financial freedom allows for a level of resilience and adaptability that's invaluable. It's about the peace of mind that comes from knowing you can handle life's uncertainties without compromising your well-being. This freedom is achieved not through exorbitant earnings, but through wise financial decisions, savings, and understanding the true value of enough. I strongly recommend you to consider what financial freedom means to you. Is it the ability to pursue a passion, the security to handle unforeseen events, or the options to retire at your own pace? Reflect on your financial strategies. Are they leading you towards true freedom and control over your life? Drop a comment below and let me know which of the six takeaway is your favorite. And do you have any other strategies to use? And that's all for today's video. Thank you. And this is all for today's video. Thank you all for staying to the end. Kindly like this video if you have learned anything from it. And comment any questions you have. Have a nice day early. See you next time.